and welcome back to a brand new YouTube video. This one I am so incredibly excited for. I am doing a revamp on my Crested Gecko's enclosure and by revamp I mean he's getting a complete new one. <laughs> And that is all because this video is in collaboration with Zen Habitats and Josh's Frogs. They sent me all of the things that I needed for this build, which is just crazy to think that I'm doing this, but I'm so, so, so excited. I have been an avid user of Zen Habitats enclosures for years. We've got this one, we've got that one down there, you can barely see. And then we've got these two right here. And Josh's Frogs is one of my absolute favorite companies to seek out during like reptile expos. I spent a pretty decent amount of money at Josh's Frogs. They have the most amazing plants that you can find pretty much anywhere and this is my first time getting them shipped to me and I could honestly not be happier. The plants are gorgeous, they do super well in their shipping and overall I just I love the two brands that I'm collaborating with today so I'm very excited and I hope you guys are too. And something super exciting as well. If you guys are interested in replicating this build, there will be a website that you can go to where you can buy everything that I used for this build to create your own. And that will be in the description box below, of course. And these are affiliate links, so anytime you do purchase anything from those links, it does help to support me and my reptiles directly. So thank you guys so much for that. On with the video. <laughs> so I have this box. This little box of things. This bigger box of things. <laughs> I'm so excited. Let's get into it. <laughs> oh, also, also to go along with the enclosure requirements, this is really cool. Um, this isn't necessarily needed, but it is really beneficial, especially if you want your Zens to last a long time, which they do anyways, but these guys are not waterproof. Um, so a bio basin is a really helpful thing to add. I haven't tried them before, but you put them at the bottom of the enclosure. It's clear and it just keeps the uh, substrate and the moisture combined in your enclosure so that you don't have to worry about it spilling out if it happens to. Out of the package, it looks like this. basically a really nice area to keep water in. <laughs> you guys can't see my address. Get this off. Okay, so this is the enclosure that we're going to be building today. This is the 2x2x2 Meridian Enclosure by Zen Habitats, of course. And this is actually their black version, so I'm very excited. All my other ones are obviously just the classic wood color, as you can tell. Um, so I'm very excited, and I think for a Crested Gecko especially, I think that they may enjoy the darkness a little bit more. So yeah, I'm so excited to see what this looks like. Um, this, been, this has been in this box for a minute, so I'm excited. I can't contain my excitement. Let's get building. <laughs> Hello. That looks nice. I actually really like the black ones. Chi is here to help you. <laughs> As always, comes with two of these. You can use this to run wires through, but if you have a snake, uh, like a species more like a snake or something really small that might be able to escape out of this hole, you'd want to use this instead. To register your product for three to five years warranty, which I'm not gonna lie, I never have done. And the meridians are really easy because you can just fold them up instead of hammering a bunch of stuff together. Usually these you don't have to hammer at all. These little screws, instead of hammering stuff, it's not focusing, but this is a little screw. <laughs> so starting from the bottom of the build up, 
This is the Josh's Frogs False Bottom, and this is what I will be using. These come in five quart bags. I may have got a little too much. I'm not entirely sure. We'll figure that out soon. And in case you guys don't know what False Bottom is used for, it's also known as LECA. People tend to use it in plants as well. Some plants do better in LECA than they do in soil. But basically for reptile enclosures and bioactives in general, Basically, it retains moisture, provides lots of surface area for bacteria and plants to grow, and wicks water, which will help maintain humidity in a vivarium. And overall, when I have used false bottom of any kind in my enclosures, I've noticed that the plants are a lot happier. So this is something that you definitely want to use in a bioactive enclosure, especially if it is a humid one. Usually you can skip this in like an arid type enclosure, but it is still beneficial. Um, but I would just definitely, definitely recommend it always in a humid type enclosure like the one we're building today. Okay, so four bags is a really good amount. Um, that's about two, two and a half inches down there, um, and that's what you need. So I definitely bought too much, um, but that's okay because I will use them in future builds because God knows, I need, I need LECA and drainage layer everywhere, all the time. <laughs> Next up, I got these little like background pieces. I got four of them, so um, I will put them next to each other below four like this. One, two, three, four. <laughs> this is a cork background. It's absolutely gorgeous, and I have personally loved putting backgrounds in my enclosures as of late. It just brings some more dimension to the enclosure, and I think it looks a lot more lively when something is in the background like this. And these are really, really well priced. Um, for like actual cork and these are really well made. They're really pretty as you can tell And yeah, I think it's gonna make the enclosure look ten times better um, I did this off camera, but I'll show you guys I put the background in and I also put some silicone in between the parts where they would connect So that I wouldn't have to worry about it falling over or anything like that also something to mention I did have to take a box cutter to these um to these background pieces um, because they didn't quite fit in the background so I just had to cut um, like a couple inches off of one side and then the top um, and then they fit pretty perfectly so just keep that in mind if you want to go this route um, but it looks really really great so I'm going to show you guys so here I have the bio basin in here that I showed you guys already hopefully if I remembered um, and then this is the background all four of them together and like Right here is where I put the silicone, and right there, and I think in that corner right there, and then I just covered them with dirt. And like, to be honest, you can't really, you can't really tell the difference. It looks really good. So I'm really happy with it, um, and I'm really excited to finish off this build. <laughs> Next up, I got a few bags of the bio bedding. This is actually my first time trying this substrate out, but this is a good substrate for humid type enclosures. And we're putting the Josh's Frogs Bio Bedding Tropical Bioactive Substrate in there. I'm gonna mix it just, oh, I forgot we need a substrate barrier. <laughs> I forgot to mention, when you have a drainage layer, uh, false bottom, whatever, and then substrate on top, you are going to need a substrate barrier. So I snagged some of these substrate barriers. These are 18 by 24, so I did need to grab two. They can like overlap. But basically the purpose of these is to make sure that none of the substrate falls down into the false bottom, disrupting the water flow. So these are very important. Um, they may seem like something that you could skip out on, but I don't recommend it. So um, I'm going to be using these in the enclosure as well. But this substrate is perfect for tropical bioactive enclosures. It's pretty much ideal for crested geckos, water dragons, anoles, and other type of tropical reptiles. It's basically just a blend of a bunch of stuff that will do really well in a humid type enclosure. And usually I do go with an ABG mix for my substrate for a lot of my bioactive enclosures, but by itself it's never as good as people make it seem. So I am really excited to try something new and something that may hold humidity a little bit better than what I've been using in the past. Now we're moving on to the fun stuff. <laughs> I got some temperate springtail cultures just because um, the substrate won't be 
completely humid all of the time. So I thought temperate would be a good way to go. Of course, you can go tropical. I might even mix them. You never know. In the future, I might add some tropical ones. But um, these are the 8-ounce temperate springtail cultures. They're incredibly hard to get on camera, but they're in there. I promise. <laughs> I think I got dirt in my eye. Anyways. <laughs> Also, I got some isopods. These ones I am super excited about. These are orange cream isopods. I'm not even going to try and pronounce the scientific name. I've never been good with that. But I'm very excited for these as well. These are a species that I have not had beforehand. Um, I can try and... Yeah, there they are. Look at them go. So I also got some magnolia leaf litter. I'm likely going to crush this up to bits. Um, because this is a harder leaf. I don't know if you can like Kind of crunchy. Isopods and springtails feed on dead things and dead plants and leaves and stuff like this So this will be really nice for the isopods and springtails, um, but I am going to crush them up <laughs> I also thought that these were kind of fun. Um, they're for the same purpose Basically the isopods and the springtails will like these a lot more than my crested gecko will but I'm very excited about these. These are just magnolia pods. I love little accents like this just because I feel like it makes it look more like an environment when there's things on the ground. You know, when you go outside, there's things on the ground. There's going to be some of these on the ground. I also got this fun piece of wood because why not? Just need a piece of wood in every enclosure, right? <laughs> also, more little fun things for the ground. <laughs> These are acorn caps. I've never seen these before, like to put in a reptile enclosure. So I'm so stoked about this. Like, look, ugh, I just love it. I know that like some people will think these are kind of like useless, but I just think that they will look really great and they will make the springtails and isopods really happy. So yeah, I definitely recommend getting stuff like this for any bioactive enclosure. Now this little thing. This I'm excited for. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna like hang it up like this or if I'm gonna like put it on the ground. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. You guys will see what I do with it. But this is the Mossy Cave. This is perfect for humidity purposes because this is moss. Um, so when you mist it up in there, it'll be really, really perfect for a humid hide for them. So I'm excited. But yeah, there's that. Super cool. <laughs> I also got these planter pots for the side of the walls. Um, I think I might try and um, put them on the back somehow. I'll let you guys know how I do that in the video or what I do with these. But I'm very excited because I got a lot of plants that do need higher humidity. So if it is in something like this, they may thrive a little bit better than if I were to put it in the dirt. Now I have this. This is jungle tree. It's the large size. I'm going to spread it out and make it something for him to climb on. I'm very excited to see how this looks in the enclosure. Um, I think it'll add some like dimension because everything will be green or brown or, you know, green. So there's some cool dark colors in there to add. So I'm excited about that. And then I also got this jungle vine from them and I have used these forever. There's actually a jungle vine in his enclosure that he has right now. So um, I like these. They last a really, really long time. Just for reference, I've had him in that enclosure for I think almost three years, if not three years. And from the second I had that enclosure, I bought one of these and it's doing really well still. It doesn't feel as nice as this one does because <laughs> it's old. Next up, I did get some really cool plants to put in this enclosure. So I'm going to show those to you guys as well. So I got a snake plant first off. This is a small little guy, but I commonly have issues with snake plants being too large. And I also already have a snake plant in his enclosure from Josh's Frogs the last time I built this. Um, so I'm going to probably just re-add that in there as well. But you can get snake plants from Josh's Frogs. And these look really, really nice, as you can tell. These are bromeliads. These are really, really pretty. I like them a lot. I think I'm going to try and like wedge them um, in that jungle tree vine or um, in between a piece of wood or something like that. I'm excited for these. These always do really well in enclosures that are more humid and you don't have to put them in soil, which is even better. 
Next up, I got this plant. I'll have to show you guys um, a little bit better when it's out of this packaging, but I don't want to take it out until I actually put it in the enclosure. This is a Calathea lancifolia. <laughs> it's a rattlesnake plant. Smog. We're not going to have this issue again. Stop. Can you guys hear him? Oh, he stopped. <laughs> it's a really pretty purple and green color. You guys can sort of see it, like, see that? That's pretty. I, I will definitely show it more up close. <laughs> I am now realizing that a couple of those plants were part of a pack. So they were part of the 18 by 18 by 24 Crested Gecko Vivarium Plant Kit. So I definitely recommend checking that out. But the next two plants that I have, this is... I believe this is a Calathea elliptica, and the only reason I know that is because this is kind of my arch nemesis of plants, but I, I am so thrilled to give it another shot. I didn't have this in a tropical um, enclosure beforehand, so it did really, really, really poorly, but I know that these guys need a lot of humidity, which is partly why I like these two plants are in these plastic coverings so that they had humidity through the shipping process. So these guys are very humidity needy so i think that this will do a lot better in my crested geckos enclosure than it did just in a pot in my house good luck me and you <laughs> and then we have this little guy i'll put the name of this plant on the screen because i'm really terrible with plant names so half the time i don't know what they are <laughs> also part of this but not part of this i have a um neon pothos that i bought at his lights just went off. <laughs> um, I have a neon pothos that I bought at the um, NARBC Tinley Expo from Josh's Frogs. I may add that into this enclosure as well. Um, it's very gorgeous. I haven't been giving it enough light, so that's the issue here. <laughs> but um, I will put an LED in here and start making these able to climb up. Okay, a little update on the enclosure. Um, I added this snake plant that I got from Josh's Frogs several years ago. I'm also going to add the snake plant that I just got from them, but just so you guys know, I did add an older snake plant that I got from them a really, really, really long time ago back there. <laughs> um, also, added this moss hide. Looks really good. Really good. Um, and also, this little guy down there. Um, and now, I'm going to put this Calathea somewhere and the snake plant somewhere in there. Um, yeah. Okay, also I did want to share, I did get this Exoterra um, forest branch, which you can also get from Josh's Frogs. Um, I ended up buying this after I did everything else, <laughs> so this is another thing that I'm going to add in there. Um, I just love adding pieces of wood. Um, I also got a few pieces of cork, like the cork flats that I'm gonna add in here as well. So I think that'll look cool. <laughs> hey friends, welcome back. It's another day. I'm very excited to finish up this enclosure. I bought two more things to add into it just to make it fill up a little bit more. Um, and these are pieces I'm very excited about and I haven't tried in any of my other enclosures yet. So um, let's see how they turn out. <laughs> so I got two bags of terrarium sphagnum moss from Josh's Frogs. And this is preserved moss, so it's not live. So you should be able to keep it for a very long time as long as it's clean. Um, so this is something that I'm gonna be using for decoration around the sides, and I'll show you guys what I mean. I'm gonna silicone this to the sides so that it stays. Um, it's basically just to add some dimension into the enclosure. I'm pretty excited about this because I usually don't do anything with the sides of the enclosures, but two bags of these. <laughs> Look how pretty and green this is too. I have some live moss in another enclosure but I'm having trouble keeping it alive so this is really cool that it'll stay this really pretty green color obviously until I have to replace it if I need to. And also I have this vine, this flexible hanging vine. It's super thin um, but you can adjust it to whatever like position you want like that. I just bent it and I can bend it back. Um, super great. Super flexible. See? <laughs> I'm going to be using this in the back area um, just to give him some more things to climb on. But very excited for this too because I haven't used this yet. 
Also, since this has been a few days since I filmed the part where I put in this pothos, um, it looks a lot better because the soil is better than what it was in before. So this bioactive soil is amazing because I don't even have an LED set up yet and it started sticking up. Like, obviously, like, it needed water. It was dry, but every time I water it, it didn't do anything in the soil that it was in before. So this Josh's Frogs substrate is amazing for plants and, yeah, super strong. Look at that. Look who's come to observe. <laughs> Anytime I'm ever doing anything else, she's like, what are you doing? What's going on in there? <laughs> okay, guys, I just finished. I'm so, so excited and I really, really like how this turned out. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys. All I really did, um, I moved the um, moss hide to the side a little bit. I added moss to the sides like how I was talking about. And then I added those vines in the back and I think it looks really nice. And also when the pothos grows out, I think that it'll look absolutely amazing and it will give Smeagol a little bit more coverage and um, some more things to climb on, which he loves. So I'm very excited for that to grow out. But anyway, without further ado, here is the final enclosure. <laughs> Okay, and that is the finished enclosure. I hope you guys love it. I think this turned out really great, and I look forward to adding more products from Josh's Frogs especially in the future, because I think I need some more plants. I love their plants. <laughs> But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and again, if you would like to recreate my build or buy anything from the build, the link is in the description below. But make sure to check out Zen Habitats and Josh's Frogs. These are two really, really great brands in the reptile community. Smog has escaped! Say hello to Smog, everybody! Hi, everybody! It's my birthday! <laughs> it is his birthday! He's four today! It's November 4th of the time of filming this, so it's his birthday. What is in your mouth? Is that part of a bug in your mouth? Anyways, that is it for my rambling. If you guys want to see pictures of this enclosure that I'm going to be posting, my Instagram is right here. You can also follow me on Facebook and TikTok. <laughs> what am I on these days? <laughs> And until next time, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you later. Bye!